Hey guys, on today's episode of the All Ball Special, I have with me the big guy of Indian football. Born in Noida, represented seven clubs in India on the domestic circuit and India on the international circuit. I'd like to give a very warm welcome to our very own Robin Singh. Robin, how are you? How's it going? Thank you for that introduction, Rahul. Uh, I've been well. I hope you and everybody looking and watching us is also well and safe. Um, better times to come, guys. That's all I can say. Absolutely, it's a tough time, and thank you for taking out time to speak to us. No problem. So, Robin, let's get straight into it. And this is a question I love asking all our guests: is the love for football? Where uh-huh. did it start? Um, for me, it was on a rainy day. Um, I used to live in Noida back in the day, and uh, I used to play cricket over there as well. But in the rains, everything's pretty much shut when it comes down to cricket because. That's one sport you can't play in the rain. So um, yeah, I I went with a couple of friends to kick a ball around, and then from there they said, "Listen, there's a training pitch as well. Let's have a full on eleven v eleven." And I said, "Yeah, if you can get boys together, who doesn't like playing football in the rains?" And from then on forth, uh, I went a couple of times, and to my luck, there was a coach there who became my coach later on. We used to run an academy in the school for people. Um, You know, from Noida, I started at Cambridge under Anadi Barua, who still lives in Noida, and I think he does a lot of football in the vicinity as well. <clears throat> Sorry, in the vicinity as well. And um, yes, so he he spoke to me. He said, "Would you like to travel with the team where where we're about to leave for a tournament to Chandigarh? Um, it's it's just an invitation for schools, and we'd love to have you." So I went home. I took that information to my parents, and um, you know, obviously there was a bit of Flack, to be honest, saying you know you're doing decently well enough in cricket. You're you're doing well. You've got sponsors coming in. Are you sure you want to leave? Probably the easiest decision I've made. I said yes. Um, that was it. I think uh, I went there. I went for Anadi Barwa's academy at that point of time, and uh, then I got picked up by Saint Stephen's Chandigarh. Um, spent in a total of two two and a half years in Chandigarh with. My first few rejections also coming coming in from Chandigarh, and uh, yes, the love continues and continues, and uh, memories are being made. And uh, you know, everybody who's been a part of my journey still, and are a part of my journey. Thank you, guys, friends, family, and fans alike. You know, your support means a lot. I mean, the rainy day. You spoke about the rainy day, and just the other day, I read that if you think sunshine is happiness, you haven't played football in the rain. No, no, I no. think. <laughs> You just you just said it, but again, speaking of the Chandigarh Football Academy, and then moving on from there to the Tata Football Academy, mm-hmm. your transition mm-hmm. in football, your progress in football, and also interestingly enough, from a left back to a striker. Yes. Um. So again, when when I spoke about rejection, uh, you know, I went to Tata Football Academy, which is the blessing in disguise uh, for being rejected at the Chandigarh Football Academy. That was their state-run and governed academy. And um, don't know what happened to them, or don't know what happened to me. And they turned around and said, "You'll never be a footballer." I said, "That's what you think." And I took that piece of information. I said, "You know, thank you for your training. Thank you for your advice. Thank you for your intellect." And um, you know, I I literally went with all my stuff. I, I you know I sat down with my parents and I said, "Thank you for your support, but." I'm not going to give up. I I'm, I'm not someone that's going to let you guys down because there have been hardships as well. You know, there, there's not been many times when I speak about my parents and um, you know the things they go through because that's that's something that I choose to keep to myself. We'll we'll get to that part in a later part of the interview as well. Uh, but yeah, I think I picked up my bag. I I went to Ranjan Chaudhary and Tata Football Academy at that point of time and uh, spoke to them and said, "Sir, I request you to give me an opportunity to try it." And if you think I'm good enough, if you think you know I will be able to make it at Tata Football Academy, I'd love to be here. So uh, thankfully, I trained. I trained my hardest. You know, trained like everything was on the line, and I got selected. I selected and spent four great years there, playing the Durin Cup, playing a number of other tournaments. Um, first professional coming contract coming out of there, captaining the Jharkhand side out of TFA. So you know, it was. It was. It was. It was a great journey, um, great memories, great friends made, and a lot was learned along the way as well. It's 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 been tough, but you've got here, and I mean that's what's important. 
but you mentioned mr chaudhry and apart ah. from them i think there's been trevor morgan mel eves and mm-hmm. you know your strike partner in tolge osbe mm-hmm. so tell us something about these three gentlemen just mentioned you know the, your experiences with them um you know from from me as an athlete I, uh, or as a footballer uh, i always look up to the side uh, my strike partner beside me or what i can do to you know help my team win games and uh, tolge and me join east bengal pretty much at the same time and uh, you know they clubbed us into the same house as well so i think uh, our on field camaraderie came on to uh, the on field camaraderie as well i think uh, our celebrations our goals our partnerships our uh, our understanding of what we bring to the table still stands you know i think uh, he was one of the first guys who who turned around and went on to kolkata football news and said I hope the national team coach is looking. I got goosebumps talking about it. Sorry. Uh, I hope the national team coach is listening. Robin Singh is ready for you. Uh, I laughed. To be honest, I laughed at him. I said, "Listen, you're one crazy guy, but if you ever need me, I'm here." And till today, we still keep in touch. I still speak to uh, speak to his family. Um, he's got two lovely daughters. Um, you know, he's 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 having a great life, and I wish him all the best. with Trevor Morgan I've had a few instances I've trained with him at a few places and uh, he was my first coach so he'll always him and Mel will always you know be there for me I I I always question myself and I always take those questions to the coaches as well as what can I do where can I improve what more would you like because for me you know at the back of my head it's I always want to improve I always want to work if your training is over you want me to say another extra hour two hours I'm not backing down. You want me there, you be there and I think uh wherever Trevor Morgan went, he he knew that this is what I could bring and you know I again I thank him as well. There are a lot of people that I met along the journey but there'll always be a few special ones. I mean, they we call it the beautiful game for a reason. You know, they get you these beautiful relationships. But in this what you just spoke about was East Bengal so yeah. with at your stint at east bengal you won the federations cup you won the mohammedan sc platinum jubilee cup so a little about that and more importantly the rivalry with mohan bagan the atmosphere the feel the mentality just take us through that because it's the it's the fiercest rivalry in the world it is you come from an end point of view so tell us some more about that it is it is i think um you know i have the smile on my face cuz a lot of people think oh there's lots of pressure there's lots of pressure no it's enjoying yourself football is a sport it's it, it is life and death but you got to enjoy what's in the middle of it you know yes you you're going to lose some you're going to win some but you got to enjoy what you do you you learn from your mistakes and you make memories out of your wins and i think that's what we've done uh, with uh, you know keeping the derby in mind per se I've loved playing in the derby, you know. I've I've loved being in the derby month if I may say, you know. It's everything's everything's at just at the edge. Everyone's on edge if I may say. Everyone's just like you got to beat them, you got to beat them, you got to beat them and all you're saying is listen. There's time. Let's live day by day and let's enjoy and take in and soak in the memories that we're going to make and I think that not just me I think the whole team under Trevor Morgan and East Bengal we there was a there was a great family atmosphere we all fought for each other you know and I think that's why we we pretty much if I may if I'm not wrong I think we we've, we've achieved second and pretty much won won the league under Trevor Morgan as well besides a few slip ups and that year we beat Mohan Bagan every time and they had a pretty strong team as well my first derby as well i still remember the goal where i think shilton paul tried to catch it and tried to land on me and i just completely moved out of the way and he slipped out and i put the ball in the back of the net and then i think the second one was a tolge osby cross if i'm not mistaken but those those boys that team I'd love to do all of that again. I think if Trevor Morgan wants to build that team and uh, take us all back in time, younger. When I say take us back in time, I mean everybody needs to get younger uh, and just enjoy, it. just just have fun with it. I think that's a rivalry that everyone lives up to. You you walk on the street, no problem. You know, if you won the derby, no problem. If you lost the derby, 
don't come out you know and, I, and i've and i've had some great memories i know another one where um i think i was playing and my mom was there and um when it's a home mohan bagan home game or an east bengal home game mohan bagan gets to do the stadiums and uh, i think my mom wasn't being allowed inside the vip box for some reason i think there was just some miscommunication fans got up there at the end of it my mom was telling me and you know east bengal is a beautiful place the fans are beautiful you know they 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 appreciate and respect and uh, you know treat family like their own family they want to help you and uh, she's like at the end of it i wanted to sit in the middle of them it's like you should have it's 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 the best feeling and whenever i unfortunately have been injured and watched the games they they've always been nothing but positive and said listen just be back we're right here waiting for you you got to be in one wagon it's like sure man let's let's see what i can do for you whatever i can do for you guys i will but i mean these derbies are you know they say that whether you have momentum or not a derby is a derby it's a completely different game as a player being a part of it how much do you agree with that a derby is a derby um you know yes the culture of fan and fan groups in um, west blocks if i may say omanja paras has has come in, in the previous years but before we knew it was mohan bagan east bengal and to an extent mohammedan sporting unless you come down to goa then it was uh, tempo selgakers and chatil brothers apart from that football was not a very uh, fan specific sport you only had football lovers if i you know if that's a way to put it and um, i think you look forward you sport football is a spectator sport and you want to play for the fans and then you got pretty much 90000 to a lakh of them behind you that's that's a wonderful number to play in front of and i've been blessed enough to play in front of a few of um, those numbers just for east bengal and mohan bagan and it's a different feeling all together you keep the ball with you when you are attacking there's just a gust of just roars from your team supporters pushing you even further and you know even if you're tired you want to give that extra bit just for them extra bit just for them to you know make sure they go home happy they they've come out of their houses they've traveled far and wide to come watch their team play and you represent them so i think it's as much as you're enjoying the sports it's also your duty to leave it all on the pitch for them and i think the introduction of the isl for these fans a few years ago was a step forward in indian football where you i think you uh-huh. played for quite a few clubs delhi goa east bengal uh, adk pune and hyderabad so what what is the experience of the isl playing in so many different franchises mm-hmm. with so many different players from around the world younger than you experienced you know on the same level what is that experience like i think with the isl came a new brand of foreigners a new brand of football a new brand of marketing strategies a new brand of entertainment if i can sum it up in totality which also brought in a, a brand of fans a brand of connectivity a brand of belonging you know a sense of belonging to everybody like let's say i'm from goa and if a team's called fc goa you're like yo this is my team these are these are boys who are representing goa and it's 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 going to be an honor for me to go support them the same way maybe if let's say you're from bombay you've got a mumbai city team and uh, you're looking at them saying listen I, i have a sense of belonging i have a sense of representation here and that gives you a sense of you know i need to go to the stadium i need to go watch these boys yes i love football yes i love the international leagues but i got my home boys i got boys at home that that need support and that's what i'm going to do so those were a few of the things that the isl brought in with them and uh, coming back to the on the field part of it you had great boys you you had i've had the honor to represent delhi with the likes of uh, maluda jona and risa roberto carlos i've had fc go i've got lucio beside me i've got gregory beside me um coming down to pune city i had ian hume beside me i think probably my favorite strike partner to play with i think him him is he is someone that again we pretty much speak I would say two to three times a month, easily without a doubt. Him, me, Milzy, um, even Marco, Marcelino. You know, all of us we we speak. So there was a sense of bonding and a sense of family away from family at Pune as well. So I've had my fair share of uh, memories also in the ISL. Uh, to the and I hope there are plenty plenty more to come because I'm not done. You know, yes, I took the year off because. 
I just had a baby. It's, it's the most beautiful thing that I have, and uh, I won't, I won't, I won't say that I'll change that decision. I, I, I love the fact that I was home for him, but it's time to get back to business. No matter where it is, let's get back to business. Absolutely, getting back to business, Robin. As a professional athlete, you know you dream and you want to play for your country. You want to represent your country. You did that in the under 16s, the under 23s. and then came the date 25th august 2012 versus maldives you made a senior team debut uh-huh. you guys won 3-0 and we also eventually lifted the trophy so you know just getting subbed on coming onto the field in national colors what went through your mind it it was uh, a wonderful feeling um as as this old bad boy images that you with that everyone in indian football talks about a lot of things mean a lot to me um and Let me be honest. I did cry, you know, be it on TV, be it not on TV. Uh, I had a moment to myself where I, from the fact of somebody in Chandigarh, somebody in Chandigarh turning around and saying, "I'll never become a footballer," to where I reached is a wonderful feeling. Yeah, man. So that being said, it's not done. As I said, I'm. I'm I want to do more. Um, I've had the opportunity to play some great games, play under some great coaches, um, but I'm not done. That's the only thing I can say. I, I got to keep going. Um, I'll keep pushing. There's not been one day where I've thought to myself that let me do something else now. This is my passion. This is what I love to do, and uh, this is the only thing I'll do. And speaking of first, you got your first goal as a 90th minute winner. in the afc challenge cup qualifiers against the chinese taipei talk us through that um i think i was subbed on for that as well <laughs> um i think it was raheem nabi on the right flank we got subbed on at the same time and all he turned around and said is stay in the middle i will find your head and make sure you smash it in the back of the net um that thing that's all i did we went on and He, before he even put it in, he's like, "I hope you're in there in the middle of the pitch." He's before he's crossing it, he's telling me, "I hope you're in there." And I said, "Whip it, whip it in!" And you know that that was it. And then I just hit the back of the net, and it was the first uh, of many. I hope uh, first first goal for your national team is always important and always a, a great feeling. And plenty more to do, man. Plenty more to come. Absolutely, you keep saying that, and you know we really, really hope that we're going to see you back in action. But Robin, uh, a little away from football now, something we know down the years is that as a player, mm-hmm. you've been misunderstood in terms of your image. You know, you've been called the bad boy of football. You've had your fair share of criticism. Is there, you know, do you want to talk us through why that is, or what is, you know, in the minds of people, or who came up with this? Why did Robin get this image? So. um firstly this is the way i look at it i don't mean i don't mind being bad if it shows the true color of my true friends so that's first and foremost secondly if me supporting my teammate on the pitch against an opponent who's trying to undermine him or be conniving as a tackle with him or just thinking he can overpower him I'm not going to let that happen. It's like it's like you messing with my family. Footballers and my teammates are my family, so that's one thing that if nobody knows about this, you don't mess with my family. Say anything to me, I'll take it on the chin. But you come after my family, I'll take you down. It's it's pretty simple. These are these are the the things I've been brought up on, and I take it on the pitch. I, I everybody that I play with or play for is. is always a family to me and i make sure that i leave everything on the pitch and in the middle of all this if i've been perceived as a bad boy at least i know who my true friends are now um and then again i never started this this whole idea of the bad boy of indian football so the right person to ask this question is why did he start it or why did whoever it is start it because people who played against me um or played with me or or even been in the same dressing room as me have a different opinion than whoever has created this image so it's something that i didn't make i won't break 
my job is to you know play for myself and play for my teammates and play for my fans and play for my family so if these people know the true me i really don't care who thinks what of me my family is more important than a rumor that that's been spread about me and also if i can take this opportunity to tell you all too many people have the power sitting behind the keyboard who won't come and say anything to my face believe me not just me everybody and i take this opportunity to bring this to myself but there are a lot of people who again they won't not just me i think we all know how much you know the the internet's an open free speech uh, platform but some sometimes for everybody's sake it gets too much man and it does hurt so you you just take it on the chin and keep going forward you don't pay attention to it so coming back to the bad boys don't pay attention to it the boys that are next to me know know how know what i bring to the table and i'm happy they know the fact that i'll give it everything for them and that's all so robin i've often heard that you know these things tend to play on an athlete's mind that someone has an image now how do you you know mentally deal with that when you're training when you're playing what ha- is there something special do you prepare for it or is it just this is who i am this is what i'm going to do and i'm going to just block this out it's it's as you said it's something that you got to block out because um, the sense of accountability is not the highest especially on the internet uh but that being said you, you just block it out because you're playing for the guy next to you not someone you know a minimum of 10 kilometers away from you you know they everybody will have an opinion about you it's it's about you believing in what you bring to the table and you again i i i, re, I repeat this a lot because it's what i what i what i believe in i i enjoy what i do and when you're enjoying what you do everything is secondary and for me that that's the truth i in, i enjoy i love playing football it's my passion i i do anything to keep playing football and that's it and if i get to do that as a living and make a living out of it and earn money then i'm living the best life i'm, I'm blessed to be here so why do i take that blessing for granted and pay attention to someone who has no idea what i'm going through so that's 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 not my business i need i need to enjoy what i do i need to play for my teammates i need to play for the people that support me and us and that's that's as simple as that i think you could not have put that better but robin another question uh with the ball and without the ball you've been extremely influential on the field uh-huh. but as we all know strikers are judged by goals to game ratios mm-hmm. so do you do you believe in that that a striker should be judged by the numbers or according to you there are more aspects that if he doesn't get the numbers a striker still is as influential even without the numbers i think uh, from a technic- technical point of view from a coach's point of view you you got to bring more than goals to the table honestly um you know personally speaking i want to be scoring more goals but if we lose 5 7 or 5 6 and i've got five goals that that doesn't mean anything but if we win a 1-0 and i and i've run everything in my gas tank out to make sure that i've i've kept the ball up for my teammates i've uh, i've helped my teammates score i've defended i've worked back on set pieces for me that's more important as a striker yes you are judged on goal ratios but that's from a spectator's point of view cuz come on let's be honest everyone loves watching goals i love watching goals man like as a striker i love watching other people score i love i love to see the ball hit the back of the net and that's why i said listen this is what i want to do I agree you know it's not been the highest number but there has to be something right that I might be doing that coaches want me over and over again and I think for me that the one point that I can point at is I will work the hardest I will work my guts out for my teammates my coaches my supporters everybody for myself as well I will make sure that you know when I come back to bed or I come back in the dressing room I turn around and say listen I've left everything on the pitch could I have I scored yes it's my job to score but at the same time if i can be a bully if i may say and you know battle defenders keep the ball up and have my teammates getting in and scoring goals then why not my job is to get three points a goal yes but if i can get three points job done well said i think i think that really sums up that question robin 
coming to my favorite part you mentioned again and again that you know you do not mess with my family you are a total family man what i want to know is in your family you know parents your wife a special mention to your granddad uh-huh. what role have they played in robin singh being robin singh um everybody has a role uh, when i was going growing up you know when i said there've been hardships um without revealing too much let me just leave it at there have been a few accidents that my mother has been a part of just to see me for a couple of hours driving from delhi to chandigarh then again you know moving away to jamshedpur i knew that you know my parents want to see me and they did everything they can for or whatever tournaments it may be in in uh, close to the central part of india because jamshedpur to uh, delhi is not the easiest of distance and you know for me i i want them to be comfortable yes they've given me the opportunity now it's my job to make the most out of it and in the middle if if you know we we can see each other yes why not technology in the run has made life easier for me to keep in touch with them and then moving on you know to my wife as well uh, she's a big pillar of support um she's the one that pushes me she's the one that you know pays attention to what what things i put in my body what meals are right you know over the years she's also been you know beside me saying listen i saw you speak here you, you spoke really well so she's she's been my biggest pillar of strength and she's also been my biggest critique or critic um so yeah i think that's that's her as well and then you know my son he's he's just a bundle of joy he's got his uh, two teeth coming out now so his two teeth sing now <laughs> um so yeah i think he, he he's growing up too fast by he's seven months already and uh, now we just have to enjoy the journey with him robin our next segment is the explainogram where we're going to show you some visuals and we want you to talk us through them so so don't worry they're pretty good ones so let's <laughs> let's have our first visual right go on oh my god yes so again i think uh, this this was a fan celebration by the way a fan turn around and um, in uh, in hindi he turned around and said make sure you sink the ship um and we all know the mariners have a sink uh, a ship as their as their logo and uh, that that that's just a piece of it but me and tolge came up with this celebration and then oh my god everybody joined in and i think it, it's 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 become uh, quite a memory for all east bengal uh, supporters and fans alike because every time i go to calcutta I'm, you know it is such it's such a wonderful feeling for people to turn around and say i still remember your boat celebration and i'm just like man what are you guys on but what a memory man that 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 was 90000 by the way oh no yeah, because this was actually collectively the entire team said this has to be the first picture because this was just something that grabbed our attention and we were like this has to be the first picture robin will talk about thank god you didn't get my dancing moves out of the first <laughs> goal of my header man oh my god no we we'll, we we'll look for that definitely but let's go into our next one yeah oof okay so this was on the way to my honeymoon to be honest um and i think i i bumped into him at the qatar airport and i've been somebody who's who's very like as as much as I, i i i enjoy myself and i can crack a joke openly i'm a very like wow i can see you but let's just leave it at that uh but i walked up to him and i said listen i'm a big fan um and uh, you know we all see you on tv i'm from india we're just transiting through the airport can i have a picture he said what's your name i said robin singh he's like i heard about you I swear i i lost all track i lost all track of what's happening and my wife was just like robin you would he kept speaking to you and you had no idea what you're saying i said yeah cuz that's a barcelona legend that's just turned around and said i know who you are and it's like what are you talking about it's like i do man it was i think it was a surreal feeling and he's like i follow the isl of seen you play for delhi dynamos um you're doing a good job you look bigger in person and 
my mind just blew up I, that's why I, i don't post you won't see like many pictures with people or with celebrities or legends or you know can you can't even sum it up what he is he's, he's just he's a legend let me just leave it at he's a, he's a legend and someone like that turning around and saying i know who you are the day is made i think I, my honeymoon was over right there <laughs> <laughs> but robin since you're out of words i'm going to put you on the spot how much would you give to play ahead of him while he's playing in midfield oof yeah being a madrid fan that's that's a tough question but yeah all right i'll play i'll yeah for you guys sake for your sake i'll, I'll go play beside him or if just share the field with him just one pass <laughs> <laughs> But I think Madrid or Barcelona, you just you just can't hate him. He's that kind of a guy. Clearly, I think this this whole um, I think hit the whole trio of Barcelona at that point of time, be it Madrid, be it Barcelona, you couldn't hate them. It, it was something that you that you couldn't hate. It, they were just so good that you that you accepted your fate that if they've got the ball, just stop what you can and stop what you could, and you can't say make sure he does nothing because he he's going to pop up and do something or the other for sure. You can't stop those three. So hopefully very soon an assist by Chavi and a little dink over the goalkeeper by Robin. Just a little, just a little. Not a <laughs> absolutely. Little. Yeah. Let's get into our next visual with you, me, and Adil. Yeah, I was soaking it in. You know, one of the few times that I I say that as big as I am, I cried on the pitch. Um. Yeah, it meant a lot, man. I think. there's a lot of rumors and a lot of stick that goes through and i think um i mentioned this before a lot of people have a lot of time on their hands and sometimes it does get to you sometimes it does get to you you got to look past it but how much you know i think mental health in india isn't spoken of enough but it does get to you and i think this was celebration of a lot of victories mentally and physically and um, you know humi understood what it meant um and that's why he came to me if you keep playing that video um you see my arms drop and you is holding me um that's that's the picture and that was the beauty of the game and that's the beauty that me and Ian Hume put to the pitch together you you spoke of soaking it in when we had Ian on the show we did definitely soak it in with the stories he had to tell us yeah but yes let's let's go on to our next one Yes, this is well I remember this. I think um I'm trying to I'm trying to remember the goal uh it was that's a walk for a reason. I I don't do that for no reason and I'm, I'm trying to recollect the memory but I think I, that was there has to be something going on on the pitch for me to walk like that as as much as I am or what I am. I don't disrespect So I think that whole memory is also a great memory. I think my time at Delhi Dynamos was great. Some great goals. Uh, Risa as well, another friend of mine that I speak to often. I made some great friends along the way. Uh, <laughs> and also being in that team with Roberto Carlos, my God, as a, as a Madrid fan, left back, dreams do come true sometimes. being a left footer yourself i think being with john and risa and roberto carlos i think you would happily take third place in someone who hits the ball the hardest <laughs> easily easily i would not even argue on that listen you want me to hit it we'll hit it now if you're trying trying and comparing powers listen third is fine with me third is fine no problem and, and there ought to be a special goal because a big guy like you is covered in that yes the, that's what i was thinking you it is I'm covered in there there's Risa who's as big as he is trying to get me down and I'm just standing straight up so that uh, it has to be a great goal and um, again I can't I can't wait man I can't wait to score some goals I've been hungry for the past year now um been training my guts out I was just about time to get back um into the ISL and uh, score some goals work my hardest make my team win and score goals Uh-huh. I'm now coming to the part you know which we've all been waiting for the comeback uh it's on the cards we've heard you say it the indian coach is looking for a big number 
yeah. how's the prep going and what what's the way forward um see uh, the national team is something that i always want to play for somewhat like at the end of the day representing your country be it at any sport in in any form is is an honor and i'd love to do that i've done it over a number of years um you know what people don't know i left from the airport at macau because my family was trying to get in touch with me and my father had a heart attack and uh, i think that unfortunately things went down from there because stephen constantine left after that as well um and when i say mental health we we it plays at the back of your head because family is very important to me and you know i was lucky enough to you know see my father get better i won't say he's recovered but get better from there but it was as simple as i have to go and you know be there for family and uh, you know i thanked stephen constantine here as well because he said no problem go home take your time when you're ready you tell me and uh, i did um and then by the time things did get better he also left and then it was just a journey for me to come back as well and uh, i've always been on that journey you know sometimes people lose faith in you teams lose faith in you people lose faith in you but make sure you don't lose faith in yourself and for me that that's very important so that that prep will never stop but the national team i will make it on my hard work again um, i will make sure that i work the hardest and if if igor stimax sees fit i'd love to play back i i've had the honor to meet him um he spoke to me um, we had a decent amount of discussion and all i said is if ever you feel that you would need me i would be ready but i want you i want to play i want to play for my nation again and whenever you feel fit whenever you as a coach feel fit that i belong in the team again i'll always be ready from a personal perspective one step at a time i've, I've had a year off and and i do believe that people will think twice before thinking about me but this is again this is my forte i love proving people wrong so i'll be back uh, club football first national team after and uh, bigger and better games to come i think we're going to stand up soon and say that the comeback is sweeter than the setback i will and really looking forward to seeing you back in action robin this has been absolutely wonderful thank you for sharing all your experiences thank you for taking time to talk to us from thank the you. entire family at all balls we wish you and your family safe health and take care Thank you thank you guys thank you everybody watching as well thank you for tuning in and uh, guys all of you doing a great job you got to do this again absolutely thank you robin